I think that's a bug called by my resolution. It's a very nice effect. Scalpel. Scalpel. Welcome to the world of Afterlife by Lucas uh, Arts, Lucas Games, whatever. Terrier. Terrier. Mm. They were Lucas Arts by now, pretty sure. Blood pressure 900 over 12, Doctor. Get me 15 decaliters of bail hour staff. Still nothing, Doctor. Hand me those electrocardial stimulators, nurse. The what? The jumper cables, you fool. Hurry! Oh, here. Clear. I'm still not getting anything, Doctor. Again, clear. Live, damn you, live! Doctor, we've lost him. Damn. So, you want to go out for a drink? And that's the setup to Afterlife. I'm Carl. And this is Narbu. I'm Mr. Arjun. And we have one more person here. I don't know if he's dead, but I'm sure he'll Bob show Andrew. up. Hello. <laughs> I was muted. Sorry. Oh, excellent. <laughs> that explains a lot. All right. So this is um, Afterlife, the Afterlife simulator. Really, the introduction of the game doesn't really explain anything, or it just sort of establishes that people can die, which is, a uh, you know, <laughs> I would accept that in most games, so mm. we'll, we'll start a new game, because let's, let's get started. Easy, medium, or hard? I'm going to put it on medium. Uh, I'll probably lose, but we'll just, whatever, it's fine. There's a cute little uh, loading screen text there. Okay, this is Afterlife. So, as you can probably guess from the... Mm, Alright, you might be able to extrapolate from the name of the game. You run the Afterlife. That's the entire premise of the game. You are the all-powerful boss of the Afterlife. But you're not God, I don't think, in this game. I'm pretty sure you're just... You're like the civil engineer. You're just sort of dumped into the position of doing everything. In a twist not unlike SimCity, where you're apparently the mayor, except how can you be the mayor when you also make everything, you know, you're also building all the infrastructure? It's a bit of a curious uh, design. So, what you can see here, we have a heaven up here, is the blue one, and we have hell, which is a red one, surprisingly. And this is the cute little planet full of creatures that die. <laughs> Which isn't Earth. Very important to note that. Not yeah, Earth. Not Earth. It's, uh... I can't remember the name of it. Uh, Ebon or Eben. Uh, it does actually say the name, I think, if I get the... Uh, the... Embos is, uh... The name of the, the creatures that live there, so... I don't know, it's Emboist or something. Uh, does matter. that explain why the angel and the demon character I see on the uh, interface look so strange? Are they supposed to be alien demons and angels or something? No, M MBOs are creepy, weird-looking things. Uh, we'll see them once we start building some things. Nice. So, we saw one of them in the intro. Yes, right, that was googly the, I think. Yeah, that's what they look like. So, if you've never played this game before, this is an extremely, uh, I guess, confronting interface. This is what you get if you boot up the game. <laughs> it's very confusing, yes. I could have sworn there's a very, very brief tutorial in this game. There is. Your first port of call is probably to run up to this button up here that says tutorial, and then we can hit getting started. And there's actually voice acting from what I recall. Welcome. I look forward to assisting you in your new role as demiurge of this planet. My name is Jasper Wormsworth, and I am certain... That you of course, if you were playing this on a Windows 95 era computer, this would be much larger. Strike a deal that will be mutually beneficial. Welcome, 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 boss. I'm Aria Goodhalo, and I'm your heavenly helper. Hiya, Wormy. Uh, look what the chair Can you turn up you just hold it? We'll discuss my compensation later. Oh, poo, don't be such a meanie. Let's get down to business, then, shall we? We're here to help you set up a smoothly running hell. And heaven. If we must. But let's use hell as our initial example. It's so much more interesting. 
and uglier. As I was saying before Featherbrain intruded, the first thing you need to do is set up a gate to allow souls to enter the infernal regions. Click on the first button in the third row. Here, I'll do it for you. And you will see a display of potential gates. Since you're new on the job and your resources are limited, I'll just pick out the most, well, economical of the three. Now we find a parcel of open real estate and place it by on the map, like so. Welcome. Ooh, but it looks so empty out there all by its lonesome. Much like your head, my dear. Actually, the virtuous little mini does have a point. All we've built thus far is a gate, an entrance into hell. If we want anything to happen in hell, we'll need to build some punishments. Before we build our punishments, let's lay down some road so the poor sods have some way to get to them. We do that by clicking on the road button, then clicking next to the gate, then holding down the mouse to drag the road out until it covers a good long distance. We can start zoning for punishments now. So I'll go up to those solid colored blocks at the top of your remote control. Each color represents one of the seven deadly sins. I'll start with the green one. Envy. One of my personal favorites. Now I'll find an open spot by the road and click and drag to create a 3x3 three three envy zone. Simplicity itself. We then do the same with the other six sins. And voila! Is the game placing the things game. for you, or are you doing that? Uh, this is the game. It automatically does this. It's some sort of uh, pre-recorded in-game well, hey, actions. Well, can't wait, but not forever, you know. Let's just scroll up. That's it. I'm sort of dumb with this tutorial. I don't think we can yeah, actually quit it. Maybe I've, I've clicked uh, it. Ah, okay. Alright, I've, I've jumped out of it. Alright. That is the tutorial and the helpers. Um, they don't once you get out of the tutorial, it erases the stuff that they made here. We really don't need any more of them. They're not that important. We're fine. Um, there are a few videos. I'm going to jump the volume down again because the music's going to cu start cutting into us. So here's the thing with this game right here. I mean, it's got some good writing. It has a lot of silly description things, and the voice acting is pretty good. The thing is, it's pretty much all wasted because the game is just really a pain to get into at all. Yeah, well, we're going to have to explain the game. I mean, as you can see, there's a few other tutorials that explain... Um, the kind of problem is it's a tutorial set where it explains about 90% of the game, and then that last 10% is crucial to not failing at the game. So... Mm. Anyway, as the tutorial that we just watched said, our main initial starting thing is to build some gates and crap, so... Let's open all of our windows that we have available to us our map view, which is quite important. You want this map out. And then we'll switch to hell. It doesn't... Because the game can't detect whether you're looking at heaven or hell. You actually have to manually toggle between the two, but that's fine. Uh, it's not a huge problem. Now, I'm just going to lay out stuff. I'm not going to probably put this stuff out in a genuinely ideal fashion. It's just going to be me slapping it out here and... Uh, Sort of hoping Wait, there's that. actually an ideal position for everything? Oh yes, and I will definitely get into that. Um, but for now, whatever. We'll just lay out stuff and uh, hope for the best. Because uh, this is what I mean when I was saying that the game has like a reasonably good method of telling you how to play in the tutorials, but they also kind of massively ignore uh, some of the other key refinements to not being a bad demiurge. Now, if someone has actually played the game that's watching this, they're getting very angry at me at the moment. But, we'll get to that. Okay. So we I laid out... You're not supposed to lay out districts like this, is what you're trying mm -hmm. to tell me. Yes, there is... Yes, there is a a kind of thing that you need to do. So we can have a look at these little bars over here, as they said, these are the different sins. This rainbow one is, as you can see, generic, it says, and that's a... Uh, let's just open a generic, just for fun of... just for the fun of it, we'll put out some generic, which looks like absolute garbage. 
Look, did the ring. Ah, delightful. All right, zoom out again. Okay, I don't actually know. You can see the dithering. It might just get eaten by YouTube. All right. Yeah, now. it looks like a weird puke rainbow. <laughs> yeah, it actually looks like that here too. All right, so we've built the uh, sins and crap, and we also need some other things. That the game does explain most of the stuff, but we'll have to lay it out anyway. So we've got our gate, and we've got our uh, other random junk. And they basically invented things so that you could do more than just build these locations, because obviously that's not enough to run an entire city building sim on. But we'll go up to heaven first, and we'll just lay out some uh, heavenly good vibes or something, you know, lay out some buildings. So let's go over here, and we'll put heaven over here. Uh, where should we put the game? The big problem this game, among other things, that it's like SimCity 2000 if you expected you'd run two cities at the exact same time. Well, I mean, it's not as hard to run the cities. You may have noticed that I actually the game isn't running yet. The game starts paused, and it's extremely ill-advised to start the game until you have all of your zones at least moderately district. Because the moment you hit that play button, people are going to start dying. And you really don't want people to die and not have a heaven or hell to essentially show up in. Now, unlike SimCity, if you've quickly noticed, this game actually tells you very quickly if one of your zones is not accessible by a road. You can hmm. see here that they have been grayed out. And that means exactly what you would expect. They were not able to be built up. No one would go to those places. So that's good. We'll have all this set up. Nice and clean. Alright. So that's the Heaven and Hells constructed. But there's a couple more things we have to pay attention to in this game before we can really get started. You can see these dumb looking floating gate things. They are very important, because there is a complex belief system in this game. <laughs> Essentially, these creatures, the amiibos, can believe in a shedload of different uh, beliefs. So let me see if I can pull up the map button. And I have forgotten which button is the map button, but... Oh, not the map button, the uh, planet view button. Oh, it's this one here, actually, I think. There we go. Hello. This is the planet view. Now, the important thing here is that you can see a huge list of beliefs. Now, they're all uh, sh shorthand there, but we can expand them out by clicking tenants. Essentially, there are the AAAAs, which are, I believe, people that are religious? I think that they believe in an afterlife. And then there is a... yeah. AAAAs believe in afterlifes. NAAAs are atheists and do not believe in an afterlife. And then you have subsets of belief, where some believe they only go to heaven, some believe they only go to hell, some believe in multiple things, some believe in reincarnation, some don't, and some believe that they go to hell and then heaven afterwards. So, And yes, the game keeps track of every like general percentage of all these different beliefs mixed together. You can believe in heaven or hell, and also believe in reincarnation and multiple things. So, there is a huge list of beliefs that dictate where people go, and there's a reason for that, which we'll get into later. Anyway, so if you have uh, people who believe in reincarnation, they have to be able to be reincarnated. So one of the extra bits of busy work the game makes you do is it makes you build a reincarnation station, and then build a train track, essentially a reincarnation track, in order to send people from the reincarnation station to this gateway vortex thing, which reincarnates them. Delightful. So obviously we have to connect this to a road, you can see that building is grayed out, and that's not good. So we plug it into a road, and now that one's working. And I'm not quite sure why you would believe in heaven, but also reincarnation, it seems kind of contradictory, but that's fine. Some people in heaven believe they go back to Earth as well for some reason. Or, not Earth, sorry. The fake place that doesn't mm -hmm. exist. 
so we'll uh non descript though? Yeah, we'll we'll plug this into here. Um and we'll just quickly lay out another station. Plug this in there. And then build some train tracks for that as well. Alright, we're almost there. We can almost say that we have a complete heaven and hell system. But there are a couple more little bits and pieces. But I think we can hit play safely, and then the game will start anyway. So let's let's start at the slowest pace while we get the rest of the game going. Tempo. Mortal plotting. And now the game begins to tick over. And you can hear all of the music, and all the buildings will begin to spawn. Fantastic. Let's zoom in on Hell, because Hell's way more interesting in this game. There you go. So let's grab the macro viewer. That's it? We got the macro view? Yeah, whatever. Mm -hmm. We got the micro view, and you can see the building, and you can zoom in pretty close on the buildings. Now, as Bob mentioned earlier, there is some really clever writing in this game, and it's hidden in all the little buildings. When you click on any single building, it tells you its name, and this one is the Punishing Peep Show Pavilions. And then if we click the uh, Note button here, it goes into several paragraphs worth of text about the Punishing Pavilion. and. The ironic twists that occur when you're punished in this particular segment of Hell. And considering there are dozens of buildings for Heaven hmm. and Hell, you have a lot of reading to do. Some of them don't have as much text as others, but there is a lot of Would stuff to read. Would you mind reading read. part of that out? Yeah, sure, I can read some of that out. Um, let's go back to this pavilion. Just the part of it, because... Yeah. If we read everything, we're going to be here all night. We won't. <laughs> the punishing peep show pavilions are just plain nasty. As the name suggests, they're buildings full of old-fashioned peep show machines. It's hell, though, so there's a couple of twists. Twist numero one o. Oh. The faces of the lusty full de damned are sewn directly to the viewports of the machines, and their eyes are propped open. Twist numero two o. Oh. The films running through the machines aren't erotic, dirty, or even titillating. They're merely evil. They're so evil that the damned would gladly scratch their eyes out, if they could. So, yeah. It's, uh, it's not pleasant. Mm -hmm. Now, <laughs> the ones in uh, Heaven are kind of less boring, because, I mean, what are you going to do? Like, in this place, it's fantastic. In this place, it's also fantastic. You know, it's just clever little bits of writing. Like, Did uh, you mean more boring or less boring? They're boring compared to the Hell ones, because oh, okay. they're just like... This one's a fishing hole, so it just says about how it's nice that they're going to be hanging out at this fishing hole, and it's going to be great. But I think there are ones like this uh, Eternal Afternoon, and it talks about what you do, and pies and stuff. Some of them are, like, pretty nice. But... <laughs> pies. And, yeah, even the, uh, even the major buildings, like the uh, Soul Mover here, the Karma Station, has a big explanation about why it exists and what happened with that, so that's kind of cool. Now, the only way that you're really going to make any progress in this game is if you hit this button over here, which summons your Jasper and Arya, and they're going to tell you that you're doing a hell of a lot of things wrong. And they're going to tell you constantly how much you're doing wrong, because you're going to have no idea what you're doing wrong. I've said wrong a lot, because... Yeah, this, this is SimCity, alright. This game is not going to tell you what you're doing wrong very easily, but yeah... You get to click these buttons, and they tell you, hey, hey, you're an idiot, you're not doing it right. Because, uh, yeah, that's that's it. That's how they handle this game. All right, so if we go through our list of problems, you know what, I'll click one, and you can listen to them talk about how we have a problem. I'd be remiss in my duties if I didn't inform you that your demons are a bit pee. So are the angels. We're tired of communing from other afterlives. If you've got the money, you should build Topias for your workforce. They'll provide housing for your angels and demons, and cut your labor costs in half. Okay. So, this is a thing, another thing that I wanted to explain about this game. You do not... The buildings do not uh, function themselves. You have uh, angels and demons, which enact the punnel penalties that are performed, or... Uh, Whatever the opposite of penalties is, I'm not familiar with it. Uh, 
Rewards. Uh, the, yeah, I guess the rewards. So you need angels to dolly out rewards and demons to dolly out punishments. But if you have no places for them to live, they have to come from somewhere else. So you build apartment block complexes for them, which are called uh, topias, and that's these uh, fancy-looking or nightmarish-looking buildings here. And they've demanded topias, which is fair enough. I can understand why they would do that. So let's lay out a topier here. Makes a nice little sound. And then interestingly, because it's no longer a problem in hell, I believe we only get information from Arya here. I'd listen to her, your darkness. A disgruntled angel is a very ugly thing. So, it's kind of cool that you get three different conversations depending on whether it's happening in heaven, hell, or both at the same time. And we'll dump a topier here. These are real- I really like these buildings, these pyramid-y angel buildings. They're really nice, I like the look of them a lot. But yeah, yeah it's pretty cool. It does have some really good pixel art. Oh, it's some, yeah, of, it does. some of the best, like, building work for sprites outside of SimCity, I think. Okay, and our next problem is training centers. You see... Other than importing angels and demons, you can actually train the souls of people that come through in order to become angels or demons themselves. I don't know why you wouldn't pick that option in hell. I mean, it's either be tortured for all eternity or not be tortured, so be a demon, but uh, regardless, it costs you money to import angels and demons, so you want to train a small amount of your own. So. Let's lay out some buildings for him. Alright, swell. So now we have some training centers set up, and once that ticks over, the game should pick up. It's telling me I don't have training centers in hell, but it's gone now. Sweet. Alright. Yeah, need to train in hell. Our next problem that we have so far is this thing called siphons. And to the game's credit, it actually tells you what these things are, so we're just going to build some siphons, and uh, I'll explain why we're building them. So... Siphon filter. <laughs> a siphon is... You'll notice that this game has a shitload of rocks all over the place. Because, yeah. So, siphons... These are magic rocks, you know. They're in heaven and hell, so they've got magical powers, obviously. I don't know. Whatever, it doesn't matter. They have magic powers. So, you have to build siphons and plug them in to draw energy from these magic rocks. Now, what these magic rocks do is they allow your buildings to level up further than they can without magic rocks. Sounds kind of silly, but it feels like another bit of busy work to do to make sure that you have to... You can't just build the exact same way. I'm assuming currency, too, right? We do have a currency, and it is our... Um, well, it just kind of comes in as this little C dollar sign over here. We start with quite a lot, of, a big chunk of money, but that can go away very quickly if you don't play smart. So, we're not really playing smart, by the way. We're kind of playing really dumb. How do you get more uh, money? Just just draining rocks or uh, souls that are present in heaven or hell dolly up money. I think every year that passes over, I believe, is how it works. I think that's how it works. I can't quite remember, but you've got a lot of graphs here, and I'm sure in one of these graphs it tells you. Yeah. There you go. It's got Heaven's Leather and Hell's Ledger, and how much they're worth, and how much net income we're making. We're making a massive loss, but that's okay. We've got time to make a profit. Alright. So these siphons, when we build them, we either have to plug them into rivers, or into roads, and then they will travel along the river or road as if it was a power line, similar to SimCity. Or you can plug them directly into buildings. As long as there's a straight, as long as there's a line between them and roads, I think you're fine. I can't quite yeah. remember if they need to be plugged into roads or rivers, and they can't be transferred through buildings to other buildings. Uh, I'm getting some shades of Transport Tycoon here, too, but not quite. There's kind of a lot of mishmash between different things, so... Yeah. It's all kind of mixed together. Alright, now, when I was saying earlier was that someone was going to get pissed off at me, you'll notice that it says here, roads in hell are bad. 
now my roads seem fine. That's because Hell actually operates on a completely different structure. It's one of the more kind of clever elements of this game. It's Hell. Why should Hell be efficient? You're not supposed to be efficient in Hell. Your road network is actually supposed to be deliberately obtuse and poorly designed. So what you're supposed to have done when you're building in Hell is make the roads kind of as shitty as possible. You want the damned souls to have to spend long periods of time wandering between the different sins in order to get to their final punishment. So building it all in one chunk here is a really bad idea. Instead, we're supposed to have zoned big chunks hiding from each other. So we'll just lay out a few new zones and trash the old ones. Maybe we can get the roads back on our side, but maybe not. It might be too late for these roads. Um, hmm. I can't quite remember the shortcut to toggle building visibility on and off. There is a shortcut to do that, I just can't remember. But this is the blue zone, so we'll trash this blue zone, which we can nuke zones. Fantastic. And we can see them pop up, pop up over here. This is the red zone. Which one's the red zone? I guess it's this one. Trash it. Fantastic. So yeah, basically the roads in hell and the structures in the roads in hell are supposed to be very poorly laid out. Which I think would make So they're just supposed to be really spread out and you have to walk a really long way to get to each one. Yes. And that's yeah, I think makes sense, I think. I think it's really yeah. really clever. I've gotta give this game some props for that. Because mm -hmm. I think it's the only uh, city sim builderish game in existence that wants you to build bad roads. I can't think of another yeah, one. Was, uh... I always really liked uh, LucasArts' approach to design in that regard. Like, this is something pretty typical of a lot of the games, actually. Yeah, so that's that's really nice and clever. Um, and Heaven is supposed to have efficient roads. Mm -hmm. And the more uh, things that are piled in next to each other, the better. So they give you a little bit of extra layout work to kind of figure out. I'm probably not going to be able to recover these roads, to be honest, because... I have to smash down everything and move it everywhere else. Now, next problem, because I'm not fixing that problem right now, is balance. Balance is wrong. At least in terms of workforce alignment. That sounds bad. Oh, it is. If hell is ever to evolve out of this current pattern, what the hell is balance, right? You'll probably have to use a method. Huh? Because you have to balance the populations between heaven and hell. Actually, no. That's you can you have actually a lot of freedom in regards to that, and that I really like. I don't actually think there's a tutorial in this built into the game. You have to kind of read a manual or something to figure this one out. But essentially, every single building, and I'm not I'm not kidding here, every single building, if you click it, you can click this balance icon. This is it's a picture of scales. And it will have the amount of permanent souls, and the amount of temporary souls. Every single punishment in the game has these. Now, you have to punish permanent souls and temporary souls in different ways. So, if we have a look at this Hell Octoplus 666, which is a pretty cool name, of the 8,000 souls, we have 182 permanent and 2,100 temporary souls. Now, our current punishment is set to 50% permanent, 50% temporary punishment. Uh, they use this abstract, like, brain punishment and physical punishment sort of thing. It doesn't connect with the other one at all. But so we need to change this around. We need to mess around with this so that it's a lot more punishing for the temporary souls, because there's a lot more temporary souls. And now, I think that's actually the wrong way. Let me check this. There we go. That's better. You can see I have turned this up, so now the punishment is more towards this flexing arm. 
and now it is extremely well balanced. And while we're here, let's look at the complete details for this punishment. Lightly populated, employing so many demons, well balanced, marginally undiverse, taking about 8 steps to reach, B for efficiency, charged, under very bad vibes, close enough to a road, and in red, which means it's not good for this, putting out slightly good vibes. What are vibes? We need to get into vibes as well. This game, it doesn't stop. <laughs> Alright. How many mechanics does this game have? The answer is, uh, there was, they were, I think every step of the way in this game's design, they were concerned that it was going to not be difficult enough to arrange heaven and hell. So they kept adding more and more mechanics to try and force you to actually have to work hard. Okay, so vibes. Let's open our hmm. map view here. I can't make these any bigger, I'm sorry. Alright, we've hit the vibe view. I'll put this nice in the middle here. As you can see, there are vibes. Very bad vibes. Slightly bad vibes, no vibes, slightly good vibes, and very good vibes. Now, <laughs> vibes are, well, they're vibes. They're kind of the feeling that you get when you're in this area of the hell. So obviously, in hell, we really don't want good vibes. We don't want people feeling good about themselves in hell. That would be suck. Alright. Mm -hmm. So, what happens in this game is that different structures put out good and bad vibes. Good and bad... Good and bad vibes. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, now we've got a big patch of very good vibes down here. Or at least slightly good vibes. Now that's because in both heaven and hell, and we'll just switch it here, nobody wants to be reminded that they're kind of stuck here forever if there's a reincarnation station around. So in both heaven and hell, the reincarnation stations give out shitty vibes. So you want to avoid putting those near everything else. We've just gotten a uh, one of the uh, random hazards that can occur, but this one is actually good. It's the only one that's good for you. It's called Bats Out of Hell. As you can see, there are bats. Isn't this the one that has something specific happen if you cheat too much? Um, not 100% sure, maybe. Yeah, I think the Death Star shows up or something. I remember hearing something about that. That wouldn't surprise me. Anyway, these yeah. bats out of hell, they will uh, take a crap on your building, so they dump guano on it. <laughs> mm. But... How is this good? Because in hell, being covered in guano is oh, not fun. Right. Yes, so... That's good for hell. You can get a similar event called the uh, Birds of Heaven or something. Not so good, because that means you get crapped on in heaven, and that's not ideal. <laughs> oh boy. Anyway, Quality. back to our heaven and hell. Uh, as you can see with these vibes, the only way that you can really fight vibes is to build your buildings in smart and correct locations. But also, the various angel and demon topias, they put out good or bad vibes, depending on which area that you're in. So if your building's getting too many of the wrong kind of vibe, you can just dump a new topia in, and that should help mitigate some of the negative influence of the vibes. But just to mess with you, the vibes from the different buildings can bleed in to the to between heaven and hell. So if you build your things too overlapping and place them in the wrong places, you can end up with too many negative vibes where there shouldn't be negative vibes. Wonderful. Now you can obviously you're intended to build across the whole map, but it's about balancing where you put the topias and where you don't put the topias along with where the different punishments sort of end up. Alright, just throw out another siphon, because why not?
Now, page up and page down will quickly switch you between the exact same locations on the two sides, which is quite handy. Unfortunately, even though you cannot page down or up to uh, to the wrong place, it still doesn't auto-switch the map. So, I guess it's to help you uh, when you're, I don't know, building. You can just quickly check, but not too sure on this one. So, what are our other buttons mm -hmm. here? Well, the other buttons tell us uh, whether hell or whatever is made up of temporary or permanent residents, how efficient they are, how vacant or roomy they are, your zoning, the traffic on the road, where your portals are, and your ad infinitum charges. Yes, a lot of goobery stuff. Phenomenal. Ooh, these things have just popped up. This means that we're suffering losses, which generally means that you don't have enough of a particular kind of structure. So, we should build more of it. But, there is an extra little thing that you probably should lay out, and the game does have a tutorial on this one, so I can't hold this against it. You're able to build these things called... Uh, if I can find the dang building... Ah! Limbo bars or limbo whatevers. Now what they do is they're essentially limbo. They're where souls hang out if they can't find the place that they're supposed to be in. So we lay this out and then this will temporarily stave off our population overflowing when we don't have the right buildings. It's very useful because uh, there are certain events in the game that can essentially create uh, an overflow of creatures, or alternatively you could trigger a, a hazard or an event which causes some of your buildings to get destroyed, and you don't want to lose all your souls to the ether. Alright, mm -hmm. so let's go back up, and we'll put one out in heaven as well, just in case. Now ideally you can place them kind of closer to one of your gates, because the game does track where people are going, or at least it generates a path for them. So we'll just throw that down there, and now we've got one in heaven and hell. But we did need more pink in, in hell, which is lust, so let's go find some, uh, let's go find somewhere to dump some good old lust. We'll just lay it out over here. Big old chunk of lust. Okay, now, I haven't even explained the whole game yet. <laughs> yes, uh, mm. I can see this is a game riddled with micromanagement. Yeah, it's yeah. Macro pretty simple to me so far. Yeah, it's, it's simple, but you just have so much stuff that you have to go right, through. Right, it's kind of crusty yeah. in a way. Like, uh, it's not hard to figure out. It's like, oh, you got to zone things just right. You've got to place power stations. You have to have places for people to be when they're not being tortured or pleasured, and so on and so forth. You gotta match the belief system of the people on your planet too, but it's like, there's just so much stuff. Like, I think of, like, SimCity, it all makes sense because it's just city planning. You're probably used to doing that sort of thing, at least mentally. Mm -hmm. So... Okay, now I'm just gonna open my thing in my jigger here. You can clearly see that I'm actually still not making money. That's kind of important. <laughs> I'm still... Who knew? Who knew that uh, Heaven and Hell were basically tourist traps? <laughs> I'm still losing a lot of money here. Which is not great, but... Our soul's value goes up over time. I can't quite remember what dictates the value of the souls. Uh, I really couldn't tell you. I just don't remember. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if the game tells you within the actual game itself. You may have to look that one up. Because it's definitely not in the tutorial. It will tell you about yeah. souls to an extent, but it won't tell you what causes them to go up. They might just go up in value over time, or I think maybe your efficiency. That is to say, your overall quality of uh, heaven and hell punishments increases the value of the individual souls. And if you've noticed, my hell is poorly balanced again, so I should jump into different buildings 
Usually you can get away with just altering the large buildings, because they're the ones that generally have the bigger population, so we can fix those much faster. Mm. How do you know if you've balanced it properly? You do not! <laughs> well, then that's great. There is no, uh... There's no map for it. It will tell you your efficiency, which I believe might actually be part of your balance. So... Could be, I think, uh, part of it. But yeah, um... You might have noticed in this particular one, the unflexible machines, there is an eyeball. And this is more little goofy stuff for you to look at. You can click it, and you get a little picture of... Well... That. Uh, some of the uh, heaven and hell things have little pictures that you can look at that sort of show the actual punishment or reward that's being dollied out. <laughs> if you can work out what the hell it's supposed to be. It usually makes more sense if you actually read what it is that you're um, looking at. But, mm -hmm. okay, so our hell balance is still off, and I'm not really going to be able to fix this. It's kind of a pain in the ass. So there is something that you can do. And what we can do is we can click this, uh, I think this is it, the Macro Manager. This is for all you lazy sods. There is a big list of random crap in here. And it lets you essentially alter all of your buildings at the exact same time. You can choose to make them more or less of the two different punishments. And you can pick which buildings you want to add effects to. So it's set to manually balance. If we hit auto balance here, it will automatically attempt to balance the structures of the color that we select. So I'm gonna click all of them. And you'll notice something. Mm -hmm. This is gonna cost me 150,000 pennies to fix. Which is not that expensive right now, but this price goes up as hell gets bigger. So we're gonna click it. And it's going to say, yep, yeah, we're going to spend all of our money. But on the upside, all of our buildings in hell are now nicely balanced. So, well, except for this one, which is extremely unbalanced. But that's because it has zero souls in it, so that's fine. That one doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. And nobody cares about the So they care about balance if the place has no souls in it? I don't think it actually gets registered. I think it's confused. Yeah. This isn't clearly as imbalanced, there's nobody here! Yeah, it, it's imbalanced because nobody cares about it. That is the secret, that, that is the trick. Yeah. I guess no one taught, taught, the, the, or taught any of these angels and demons the concept of the zero. <laughs> mm. Maybe it crashes the game if they try to ignore a building. Who knows? Alright, so we've kind of got most of this laid out, so let's talk a bit about the planet view, which is actually one of my favorite elements of the game. You see, we have an actual geoscape, similar kind of to the one in XCOM. There is a... There is a planet. It has been generated for this game specifically. And as you can see, it has land, and mountains, and water, and hmm. arctic. That's pretty cool. And as you can see, right here is this glowing spot. And these spots are where the inhabitants of this world live. So they've managed to fill out nine blocks of population so far. And each one we click, it will tell us how many live there, their technology level, their sin levels, and, well, their sin and virtue levels, and what they believe in. And yes, you can check it for every single block in the geoscape that's running, well, Planet View, that's running alongside mm. the whole game. Here's where it gets kind of cool and fun. What you can do is you can actually choose to uh, inspire a prophet. You can decide to say, well, I think that these people should be more peaceful. So, you pull up your virtue of the red one, which I am pretty confident is uh, wrath and peacefulness, yes. And then we bump it up, and we can spend a significant amount of coins depending on how much we want to uh, affect that stat. So, 
we can say, so all right. So you're saying you could tailor heaven and hell to specific traits, basically, you, if you, you have the money. Well, you actually scale, yeah, you scale the planet, which then d dictates wha what happens on the planet. So we'll make the planet more peaceful. We have inspired the gifted actor, that guy. So now they're going to be less violent, which probably means they'll kill each other less. At the which same, means you need less wrath in heaven and more of the equivalent in heaven, I take it? The yeah, so we'll need less happened. wrath in hell, and we'll probably need more, um, peacefulness in heaven. I imagine more peace on the world would be good, because you don't have to build as many buildings. It does slow down the game a little bit. Much. Yes, you can mm -hmm. do that. What you can also do is say, well, I think that I want everyone to go to hell. So you could <laughs> send a prophet that, uh... Expo explosives? I can't remember the word. doesn't matter. That just says, hey guys, there is no heaven. There's only hell. Everyone's going to hell. <laughs> and then that will become a stronger belief system. And you will get more people going to hell because people only believe in hell. Now, you can also make people believe in reincarnation or not. Now this is quite handy because it means that you keep more people in hell if they are in heaven if they don't believe in reincarnation because they'll just get stuck in heaven or hell forever. Whereas you can turn up their reincarnation. I don't know if reincarnation gives you more people um, overall because reincarnated people are immediately reborn on the planetscape. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. At least according to the in-game text, but I've not seen anyone talk about that. You'd probably have to look on a guide online to see what the effects would be overall. Well, see, there's if not... If it's beneficial or... There's not too many guides. Some of the guides explain the more interesting stuff that you can do, and I'll go through a couple of them right now. Firstly, you can actually yeah. make them believe that you don't exist, which is a nice feature. You can... Conv I is believe... there any benefit to that? No, I believe it's a game over condition. You can actually make mm -hmm. everyone on the planet no longer believe in heaven or hell. Why would like you want to commit get, seppuku, essentially? When you get bored of the game? You can do that. I, I, mean, I think maybe it's just like, you can do it. Like, it's like you could make that your goal, is to make an entire planet of atheists. And that could be your <laughs> your planned goal for this time. Mm -hmm. But, there are more other things that you can do. And one of the more fun things that you could potentially do, is you could make everyone lusty. Now, what would be the advantage of that exactly? If you do that, growth, yeah, Bob oh. got it. Got, Bob got it in one. You can make people more likely to have children, and then that generates a much larger population growth. Also, it generates more people going straight to hell, which is an amusing side effect. <laughs> yeah. So essentially, you can alter the uh, planet views so that everyone only believes that they go to hell forever, and then make them have lots of children, which is an Amazing feature for a game. It's the only game I know of that you can do that. That is dark. Uh, now, would having them so that they all kill each other also help? Yes. So they're constantly having babies and dying. Yes, you can also increase their wrath. So you can actually make them have be more warlike and have more children if you feel like it. So it's amazing. A bunch of hell balloons and just kill them real quick by doing that, right? Yeah, and if you do that too much, you'll actually find that you can't keep up with the growth, and then you'll lose souls, and lost souls are very expensive in the bank, so... You can really screw yourself over if you're not paying attention. I'm sure someone can work out what he said. <laughs> uh, you have the lost souls, and then you have the pain elementals, and then the pain elementals summon more the lost souls, and it's just like seven of your systems really starting to slow down. And... Yeah, so... You can see here, my sin levels, my virtue for peacefulness as well, now way through the ceiling. See this nice big red block here that says, hey, a lot of shit going on. And yeah, you can, they do have a technology level that increases in the background of the game as you play. As you can see here, they're on fire, but they go through to like, uh, I think there's like pottery and some uh, wait, agriculture. Wait, they're on fire? Like, like I, 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 can't you see? I'm this sorry, guy's but the way I heard that is, is, is that they're constantly on fire. Like they're just this guy is clearly people. on fire. <laughs> but yes. I thought maybe you were thinking on it, maybe you meant they invented fire. Yes, they, they are currently at just they have fire at the moment. 
But they can get things like, I think they get agrarian cultural stuff, and they move through to the modern era. I don't know if they end up in the future. Uh, kind of going from the intro to the game, I would expect that they do end up in the future, but I can't quite remember how far they get. Now, what you can do is if you take them to like modern era technology and then inspire Wrath, they'll probably nuke themselves into a holocaust. Do they, they actually go extinct? Yes, that is another fail condition. You can send the entire planet extinct. It is possible. Amazing. Yeah. So, this little geoscape here is quite a novel thing for a planet builder. Very cool little thing. So, I'm seeing this, and it's making me wonder if anyone has attempted something similar, because this is kind of running into Dungeon Keeper territory, where it's just such a unique sort of sim or management mm. game. That not there's not a lot that kind of compares because I know Dungeon Keeper yeah. at least has a couple of games that are vaguely similar. There's a couple of clones. I don't think this one has that many clones. I think that ultimately this one wasn't super popular because I think people who bought this game were expecting something a little bit closer to theme park or a bullfrog title, right? Because you know it's called yeah, Afterlife. Is... It advertises itself as being very, ooh, it's kooky and funny. And it is funny, but the humor is you click a building and then you read about the building. And that's, that's hilarious, laughing my ass off. Um, but no, it's like actually quite a strict, very um, comparatively complicated city sort of construction sim thing with very abstract rules because it's not based mm. in the real world. Compared yeah, it's to everything a very else. Game as a consequence, yeah. Obviously, it's not as complicated as City Builders that you can get now, but at the time, this was at least as complicated as Sim City 2000 because it was more so. Hmm. I'd say, honestly. So more when you so. when you think you're going to get a fun game like Theme Hospital, and you end up with this. Although Theme Hospital came out in what, like 98, 97, somewhere around there. After this game, this game I was think it came out pretty early. I thought. Let me check. Because I know God has both of these games on it, so we can actually compare and contrast when they came out. Because I think Theme Hospital came out before Theme Park, didn't it? Then it was Theme Park. So, actually, no, you were correct. Uh, theme Hospital came out in 1997, a year after this game. Let's see when Theme Park came out. Because it's possible they weren't expecting either game. It's possible, but I know they were expecting a lighter hearted game than SimCity. Okay, okay, so, so yes, yes, Theme Park did, did predate this, this game by two years. years. This came out two years after, looking at uh, GOG and yes. its release date. So people were expecting... Do you wonder what kind of reviews this game got now? Mm. Um, on GOG, it's quite highly rated, but that's because the people that are posting about it are obviously people that have been waiting for it to get re-released on GOG for quite some time. Because this game... Well, I mean, back in the time, like, magazines and such. Right, right. right. I think this game was... That's I, hard to say, Bob. I think it was quite well received for what it is, but it was also criticized for being this. Because this is... I really consider this more of a... This is a spreadsheet game. This is a very spreadsheety game with this yeah. very colorful, very fun heaven and hell overlay. But the actual game itself is not... Like, doesn't nearly match the concept of running heaven and hell, which was the tagline for the game, more or less. But what you really do in the game is just try and make money, mm. which is a little bit confusing. Okay, I don't really know what I can do further here, so I might just turn the speed up a little bit, because... Let's, uh, let's lose the game by turning up the speed, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sounds like a plan. I'm not gonna put it... I, I believe this is one of those games where the three settings, or the four speed settings, are like, something like, you know, paused, slow, kinda slow, maximum CPU speed. <laughs> so if I, mm -hmm. if I tick that last button, I'm pretty sure the entire game will explode, and it'll just like, immediately game over me. <laughs> Cause... That's a good plan, yeah. The uh, there is another way to game over, and that's be in debt for too long. If you're in debt for too long, the four surfers of the apocalypse show up and uh, take you away. 
as you can see, my pennies in and pennies out are still way out of line with what you would want them to be. I'm still waiting to make a profit here. I mean, the problem here is that my workforce is, I believe, still mostly imported, and that's very expensive. 85% mm -hmm. of them are imported in hell. So what I should probably do is build some more training grounds in hell to get some more hellish individuals trained. The problem with building too much of this is that, because this is a thing that can happen later on, the different buildings actually have different amounts of efficiency and demons required. So, the final stage of a lot of buildings in this game require less demons and angels overall compared to the previous ones behind it. So if you end up having your entire workforce being entirely not imported, what will happen is that they will no longer have jobs, and then you will have angel and demon unemployment, and they get bored and start rioting and causing havoc in heaven or hell. <laughs> so that is a... Very fascinating ideas here on display. Yeah, yeah another thing that can happen... I will say that there is something that... that, that Oh, I was going to say, there is something about this game that's always struck me as being kind of bleak mostly because it's just a black void in heaven and in hell. Yes. It's not, there's the, buildings, the buildings themselves are very colorful, the interface is colorful, then it's just black. It's just this very strong negative space. As you can see here, it's kind of overwhelming. This, this warning message has actually popped up that tells me exactly what I was just saying. It's warning me that most of my angels are now trained in heaven and I should turn off my training centers. That's very good advice. Let's go turn off the training mm -hmm. center. Because we do not want this thing to be training. And you can turn it off. Sweet. So now we're nice and safe. Yeah, that's pretty simple. Uh, kind of I really it's like Arya. Yeah. Most of the bad stuff that happens in this game, you'll get a warning. But... Sometimes when it tells you, it's much too late to do anything about it, and you're already in trouble. Excellent timing. I probably shouldn't have closed them. You gotta keep their window open, otherwise, you know, things will happen. I really like the Jasper and Aria characters. They're very, very nicely portrayed. They remind yeah. me... They remind me of the, uh, black and white advisors. <laughs> But I prefer these two than uh, the goofy little demon things. Or you know, bald you know that's a game that guy. probably needs to be revisited and streamed as black and white because that was a game that uh, wasn't very well received in its time. Because, well, mm -hmm. if you know anything about that game, you'll know exactly why. And I won't go yeah, into it make further. A sequel. I know that much. Never played it though. Wasn't well, the sequel like, also disappointing though? Like, like the, the sequel, sequel fixed some things, but it also cut out a lot of like the more dynamic elements. Oh, oh. Do you know what sim game I'd really love to cover for GTA Max or anything like that? What? Evil Genius. Yes, <laughs> that, uh, that falls into the Dungeon Keeper build of, um, or I guess sub-genre of strategy and management games. That is also a really hard game to figure out, though. Yeah, I like, um, I actually like all of those games mentioned, so I'd be happy to look at any of those. Um, Black and White 2, I did find, was a hugely disappointing follow-up, actually. If you know what was going on, it's really not a good game. Um, for Black and White 2, what happened was, they basically changed the game in specific ways that made it significantly worse. Like, it moved away from its core concept, and at the same time, kind of broke the gameplay in the wrong direction. It's not too easy, it's just kind of stupid. Oh no, we've got some limbo losses, everything's <laughs> going wrong. Oh god, what has mm -hmm. happened? Why did this happen? Slow it down. If we do any uh, Lionhead game though, any manga game, I you would wanna... really love to do the movies. You want to do the movies? Okay, as you can see here, oh, yeah. my uh, my little bar here apparently is overflowing with souls. Something has happened. So, one thing that's really Does nice about this game is uh. You can actually click a building that is potentially upgradable, and you can actually just choose to upgrade it. 
and then it upgrades it to the next level of that building. You don't have to knock it down or rebuild it or click anything else. You can just choose the building and then it's done. Oh, that's so, cool. So we'll have a look here because uh, there was something going wrong and we can see it here if we look at the population graph. So many graphs. If you love graphs, this is freaking your game. Alright, so we're now looking at just hell. Oh wait, just just hell. And you can clearly see that slothful is way overflowing. So let's build some sloth. Mm -hmm. Now is sloth one of those things that would have a negative effect on your population on the planet view? I'm not quite sure what do sloth anything. does. Yeah, I'm not one hundred percent sure what sloth would do, but I assume if you made them too slothful, the technology level would probably increase very slowly. Would be and my... And population, probably, and other things. Yeah, I would assume that would that would be my first assumption. So, we'll lay out some sloth, and there you go, look at it, just fly on. Ah, uh, it's very... that's so satisfying, and it's the same with SimCity, it's so satisfying to have the... the mm -hmm. buildings just explode into existence extremely rapidly. Because... <laughs> You're just like, yeah, I zoned some land. So why are you connecting the road to the lava, exactly? I have not connected the road to the lava. Uh, okay. It's the public baths. <laughs> oh, you're, I see what you're doing, yeah. I'm building a loop, yeah. A nice little loop so that we can build a ass load of sloth. Let's just build a shed load of sloth. Because I'm going to assume that people are... Nah, it's, that's way too much sloth, but that's fine. We'll be all good. Sloth and now, okay, here's a question. Is it better to have too many punishments and pleasures, or is it is it something you actually have to keep well balanced and maintain? Sloth and excess of parts per million nearly recommended. I don't think the game punishes you for having too many unused districts, but um, I do believe that there might be an operating cost to have buildings that exist that are then emptied out later on. Ah, uh, okay. Let's get the viewer here, see if we can find an empty place. Mm -hmm. There you go, this one is 12% full. And it is uh, employing 250 demons. Now, that's quite a <laughs> lot of demons for a place that is only populated 12% of the way. The one next to it is 100% full, and that one is employing 250 demons as well, you see. So if you let your buildings become, I see. yeah, if you let your buildings become too numerous, you can end up with this horrible problem, where you have way too many uh, creatures and demons and stuff going on, but at the same time, you've got like leftover buildings that can't evolve because the buildings only get bigger when they're full, or at least when they're on their way to being full. You know, there's quite a few conditions that dictate whether a building expands into the next version. Oop, we're taking some losses in heaven. Oh my. Alright, well, let's fix heaven up. Let's get some red out here. Since it's clearly red that's causing the Right, problem. because you told them to be peaceful. Yes, I did, and it's come back to... Not really bite us, but... Come back to exist. Now... Why are there giant buildings... Why are there buildings that are giant Ronald McDonald's shoes? What is that about? Well, we can click the McDonald's shoes building. Once Maybe they go in there and they're like, ba -da -ba -ba -ba, I'm loving it. <laughs> Dude, you're advertising soon, on our so. stream, you bastard. <laughs> How much Let's did they pay you? Lose it. <laughs> Coincidentally, um, uh, no, never mind. <laughs> Coincidentally, here's the thing I did not remember or think through before I said it. Well, I'll just say this much of please stop ordering the chickens, they're a pain to make. <laughs> Do you think they'd be easier because they're just deep fried? Well, yeah, they basically are deep fried, but the problem is mainly just how fast we go through them. Nothing Everyone, quiet! Another. We've got an award. Oh. The award for um, large purple structures. Oh, the award for being pre-rendered. Yeah, that's a good one. I don't even know if these are pre-rendered, to be honest. 
I think these are they hand drawn. They look like they've been painted and then scaled down. Maybe some of it might mm. maybe looks pre rendered, but it's definitely something going on there. Weird. It's a very. Mm. I love this art style. I have no idea how they got this art style because it's so strange. Yeah. It's it's like pre rendered. Well, like it's some... oh. Yeah, it's like pre rendered mm. bits and pieces that have been stuck together after they've been yeah, rendered. Yeah, it's like a both wow. Yeah, it's a very interesting like style. It. Yeah. And you get looks a nice like little. Some really good artists in the mid nineties. Yes. All right, so what that is is that's a reward for being so freaking fantastic. All right, so um, you do get rewards. Um, I think it's just for getting enough souls in the different places or uh, reaching a certain benchmark. Can't quite remember um, because you know it just kind of just feels like it happens. But <laughs> uh, we have a new thing, and we can just lay it out. And I believe these put off. These put off the vibes, so these are the things that pump out, like, extremely good or extremely bad vibes. Now, again, the rocks are gonna get in our way, and there's always rocks in the way. I... Frickin' rocks. Just all over the place. Is there any way to drain the rocks, or remove them, or blow them up, or...? No, I think they stay there... forever. I... They're just something that you kinda have to build around so that you can't just employ a... perfect strategy, more or less. So. No, this is like SimCity where there are scenario modes where you're given like a specific layout you have to work with or a specific like end goal, like you need to have so many wrathful people in hell and... Unfortunately not. I kind of feel like that might have been something that would have been on the cards and they might have abandoned it, because... Because it's interesting, you can tailor their religion and beliefs in such a way that you could probably replicate most real-world religions, but there's no, like, mode where it's locked and you have to work with that specifically. Yeah. I assume this game just goes on till you lose, right? Yeah, it just goes on and on. I can't remember if there's... I guess your win condition would be to get all of the available rewards. Because as you can see, there is a big pile of rewards available here. I'll lay this one out here, it's not a good position for it, but... I do want to look at this glorious, actually very poorly angled uh, sprite here. I, that's, did they make the intern do this? Whatever. You guys can see what it's I mean, so right? It's so tiny, though. That, so that, that, mm. that angle is all wrong for this juttering block. Yeah, it's nightmarish. Let's see if we can get these shoes. Uh, come on, shoes. There we go. Hoffa's heavens, and that is. If everyone's being given the gift of dance. They no longer speak except through dance. Alright, well that's fun. Yeah, honestly, that sounds like a great way to do things. Yeah. We should do this for real. You've Maybe it's actually the school of how to become Ronald McDonald, and that's where they come from, they come from heaven. How <laughs> much did they pay you? And they get reincarnated, and then they go to the McDonald's to sell the hamburgers and the uh, chicken to, McNuggets. To, to sell, or to buy the... Like, Freaking fifty mate chickens, most of which it falls down to me to make. How like, come you're getting why is it always your shift, Sergeant? Because that's the, the funny I thing never, about all your like, McDonald's stores. It's like, yeah, someone came in today and ordered all of the food at the restaurant at once. Yeah, I'm not really sure why, but like, for some reason, like every single day, at least at one point in the shift, in my shift, as someone's just gonna roll in and order like freaking ten McChickens at nine p.m. And I should note that we usually only have. Twelve patties ready at a time across two baskets, so that means I basically have to scramble my ass off to make more. And note that other people are still ordering things. So this is something right. that's kind of uh, a little rare, I guess. Um, as you can see, I have no problems. Nothing is wrong. I have everything under control. That's a good feeling, you know. Well, you have it well balanced. You've got power stations. You've got people employed or unemployed as necessary. So let's uh, let's see if we can keep this rolling. I I have to double check. I don't remember the button, and it would be very useful to know. There is a button that uh, you can press that immediately lowers the building so that you cannot see them anymore, so that you can see the color of the ground that you've laid out. Which right, because the buildings eventually will block everything. Yes, there is also a button. You can relief. You can put it on no visibility, and you can also put it on a uh, smaller scale, so it goes to like the minimum size possible, even when maximum zoomed in. So those are two helpful things. So let's put some put some good old envy here. No. 
Oh, I forget what I was going to ask. There's something relating to this game, obviously. But... Really? I don't remember what it was. I just don't remember. Get some more ad infinitum, or whatever it's called. Oh, balance and hell. It's gone all whacked out, so let's spend all of our carefully earned money to fix it. Auto! Everything is there any reason hell. not to use auto balance other than it's expensive? It is expensive. Right now it's going to cost me 300,000 pennies to auto balance hell. How much money do you have right now? I only have 3,300,000. So, I'm pushing this button, but... Yeah, um, I'm now down to under 3 million. And I started with 5 or 6 million, so... We're slowly falling down to actually being below the amount of money that we need. Hell is getting increasingly expensive. <laughs> Our net income in hell... Gee, I wonder why! ...is minus 1,000 credits, almost, or pennies. So yeah. So what you're saying is you probably want to send more people to heaven because it's more profitable. Uh, do I get more money for people in heaven? Yes, I do. I get double the amount of pennies for people in heaven. So probably a good idea to send people to heaven at the moment. Can't remember what dictates the money, but yeah, that's a bit of a problem. My health cost is so expensive because I'm still, most of my demons are still uh, imported from elsewhere. And I believe some of them are commuting. Uh, because we don't have enough of these structures. So let's quickly throw out some more structures. We'll throw out... That's weird, because you didn't need that many in heaven. No, it just depends what you've sort of laid out. So let's make sure that these buildings over here have some demons next to them. Because then the demons don't have to walk as far, and they're very appreciative of that. <laughs> okay, some more... What was that? More topias? But we need more training. Now, I guess we can take a big risk here, which will probably bite us in the ass later on, but let's upgrade the training center so that we can have significantly more training done. This one is sparsely populated, unfortunately. Very few demons are going into that one. Do any of them have a maximumly large amount? 0% trained. Ah, this one is training the most at 43%. Will accept. Ah, this training center will accept 50 to 100 percent of all demon applicants. Now accepting 100 percent. So I guess not many people want to actually be demons at the moment. But let's just upgrade this building so maybe we can get some more people in there. Don't know if that works, but it's better than just instantaneously losing, which is what will probably happen because we are running out of money very quickly. Whoops. I accidentally hit the rotate view button. Be careful with this one, it's very confusing. Alright, let's look at the planet again. As you can see. Oh no, it's gonna crap in heaven. This is that damn bird. Bugger off, mate. <laughs> you think they wouldn't be pooping, you think they would be like reverse pooping, like all the bird poop that had been left there in heaven previously is being sucked back up into their bodies. Because it's heaven. You know, bad things aren't supposed to happen. That's why you're not... That's why you don't want it to happen. Okay, well, I mean... They haven't crapped on a building yet, so I have high hopes, high hopes they won't actually get to one of my buildings. That would be nice. But, um... Oh, no, there's the stupid-ass bird. Stop. Alright, sweet, the birds have left. That's better than nothing. Alright, as you can see, what I was trying to show before, the planet has become more and more populated. The civilization is spreading out. Now, I think this game can have separate islands. I actually cannot remember, to be honest. Hmm. They might be able to generate islands, and then they do, um, they actually they get boats at some point during their technological expansion. So let's spend some of our money, and uh, you know, some of our limited remaining money, and inspire a guy to maybe get them out of being a uh, shit zone of un, you know, uneducated idiots. <laughs> so th the smart thing to do when using these is to find the most populous portion of land, which is one of these dense ones here. 
So, and then just lay down a profit, basically. And then lay down a profit and be like, hey guys, you know what doesn't suck? Plumbing. <laughs> ah, sweet. He, they, this guy invented pottery, so now they're at tech level pottery, which is good. So that will increase their population and hopefully get me some more stuff going on. And, uh, you know, to be honest, what we're looking at now is essentially the vast majority of the game, to be honest. Like, from this point on, it's just trying to balance and keep everything working. Uh, I'm not stable at the moment. Ooh! The ugliness engine! Yes! Well, this Harley seems terrible for what it's trying to do. It's just really not an easy game to get into at all. Yeah, good luck getting into this game. <laughs> yeah, it seems a little like uh, convoluted. It doesn't seem like it's hard to get into. It seems like it's hard to balance everything and keep it balanced. Yeah. Well, I mean, everything that I've told you, only like 80% or as I said 90% before is actually sort of covered. It doesn't really explain in detail in the game how you're meant to do any of this stuff. This is me piecing together, playing the game, and reading guides to the game. Good luck hmm. sort of bumbling your way through this because, you know, balance and all these like little bits and pieces, all the different ledges you have to keep an eye on. This is great. I love yeah. this. This is the religious graph view. You can see all of the possible religions that every single person can uh, possibly know. This Good is the luck. complete set of, uh, of beliefs. Are you guys a Ho-Ho Ralph Asuma? Or are you more of an Oracle Ralph Asusa? <laughs> <laughs> what? It just rolls off the tongue. This is the mm -hmm. different acronyms for the belief systems. Okay, you take that picture right there. That's basically afterlife in a nutshell. <laughs> yeah, this is um. Like, if you can understand that, you can play this game. <laughs> the uh, graphs and charts and graphs and charts and charts and graphs and magma. What I like about this is, I believe that this is only in um. This doesn't include the atheists because atheists don't go to heaven or hell, so that they uh. Just sit here. They can't exist in this graph. I also believe it's possible to change the entire planet to people that believe in reincarnation, but nothing else, which is pretty funny. Mm. Does that have any advantages? No, nothing has any advantages. It's usually bad for you. One thing that you can do, though, is uh, apparently people that believe in reincarnation, you can, uh, you can make them forget that they believe in reincarnation by making the train track really freaking long because apparently they stop believing in reincarnation by the time they reach the end of it and they forget that they believe in that. So that when they are reborn on the thing, they no longer believe in reincarnation, which is a wonderful right. thing that you can do. Uh, yeah. yeah. A lot of subtle manipulation. Come on, hell. Come on, hell. Come on, hell. We're, we're, we're going to lose it's all It's weird you have, have well, heaven so well balanced. You figured heaven would be harder to balance than hell. Mm. Well, I mean, part of the problem is I didn't start doing important things early on because I wanted to show you sort of the various things that you have to do in a procedural order. Uh, I would have probably balanced Hell a lot better if I was playing this more seriously and uh, would have definitely built some buildings before I let a bunch of problems happen. But as you can see, roads are also expensive, so having too many roads to make Hell nice and balanced costs you a lot of money. Fantastic. But yeah, I've got a lot of demons operating that I probably don't really need that many demons. So that's a that's a bother. But we'll we'll try and deal with it as best as we can. Keep an eye on all of our graphs. Lots of people with uh, envy still. And uh, I did want to show you guys. That's right. Quite bizarrely and reminiscent of a uh, roller coaster tycoon. Uh, you can actually view every single person that exists in the game, if I remember correctly. Every single human in the game can be observed. 
There he is. Does that do anything useful or? No, but as you can see here, this is this guy, and this guy is punished for lust, and is 63 years left in uh, the location I've clicked on here, and they believe in ha ha ra fa fa I like how grody these people look. They do so... they look that bad in heaven, I have to wonder, or is that specifically something that happens to them in hell? No, that happens in heaven. They're just gross. <laughs> <laughs> that might amazing. just be how they look, because remember in the intro? That is, right, that's just how they look. Let me see if I can get you some more of them. Oh, I thought that was like some cyborg ass life support mask that was covering like a normal human in the intro. Well, it was a life support mask, but that's what they actually look like. Oh, uh, interesting. I'm not quite sure how this thing tracks all of its, uh, bits and pieces, because, uh, there are significantly more people than you can click through. But, yeah, you get to sort of look at the different people and read what they've done. I'm not sure if it's, like, just a sort of summary of, uh, the people. We'll go to, uh, we'll click Heaven here and just, uh, because they're the exact same people. See, actually, this one's even grosser. Forget that. <laughs> Mm. All the gross people go to heaven. <laughs> wow. Yeah, and, you know... Is that a Wookiee? You just get to look at this, like... There's quite a few different faces that can be generated, and they're all terrifying. They are going Disgusting. Yes. See, I kind of want to see a modern, uh, sort of remake or reimagining of this. Because it's, yeah, it's definitely a game or a concept ripe for a lot of potential. I think it would work better if it was more like Theme Park than SimCity. Uh, it's debatable. Okay, so what happens if you click one of these boxes? You can actually hear them talk. They actually can talk? Oh, the, uh, yeah. Whatever. So you're talking about the individual villagers or whatever, the people. If I wasn't already dead, I'd get a pretty little gun and shoot myself. <laughs> That's phenomenal. Wait, what did she say or he say? I can't, I can't hear him. Ah, uh, Jasper says something because he's tremendously fun. Okay, I don't want to track souls anymore. They're creepy. <laughs> yeah, souls are weird and gross. Well, that's not their souls. That's what they look like in uh, regular life rather than in the afterlife. Well, yeah, but souls are grosser and Unfortunately, weirder. the game has just hit a brick wall and died. Aw, oh, what a shame. Oh. Doink. Hey, and you didn't crash. save either, so you gotta do that all over again. Yes, I didn't save. What a shame. And I don't, oh. think, don't wow. think this one auto-saves, but you did ask a question earlier, so I will quickly reopen the game, and uh, we'll uh, have to fix this. Now, I don't believe... At some point. Oh, hold on, I'll just... Uh, all right, and we're back from the crash. But uh, unfortunately, I don't think I saved, and I don't have a game that's further along in my own storage. I only have a couple of crappy saves that I've made with nothing real progressing. Um, I don't think the GOG version will crash. It might, but this is not a GOG version. This is actually the CD running in uh, Windows 95. I haven't picked up the GOG version yet. You asked if there were scenarios. There are actually four scenarios. Ah, nice. Which isn't that many, but you get four. And then you get a little bit of information here. The lazy demiurge in charge of this afterlife took the easy way out. So only only for generic sins and virtues. When things got too difficult to manage, the demiurge skipped town, leaving you holding the bag. Have fun. So, yeah, you have four different scenarios that you can use to play the game in a specific way. I don't believe that they break the game's rules in any way. Like, I don't think that they lock belief systems or... Uh, so what's the scenario here, then? They only made generic punishments or whatever? That is correct. Now, the thing about generic punishments is... Jeebus, I don't know how you could possibly... Good luck reading this, everyone, because... Holy hell, good luck with this. <laughs> wow, that is a... Oh. Do you know what's going on? Because I freaking don't. 
This uh, this this looks like Fortran. Like this is just this is about as legible as Fortran. I'm just gonna say that much. I'm pretty sure there is a road in here somewhere. I hope there's a road. Yeah, there's road networks in there. You're just gonna have to find them. Anyway, uh, yeah. So this one, you presumably have to uh, rebuild it so that you have less than generic, because generic ones are less efficient and give you less money. Pretty sure if we check the ledges, we'll probably find that we are maybe making a loss here. Let's double click here. Oh no, we've got a net income. So this one is just more of a fix it up so that it runs better, I guess is the uh, the goal of this one. So that's fine, you know, you get a few different scenarios. 100% imported, 99% imported. Sounds like this will actually explode when we actually start running it. Let's hit demonically fast and see what happens. It's running at lightning speed. And that's the Ooh, lightning Is speed. it gonna do the legal operation thing again? It might. But probably not. I, I believe it crashed because I was watching too many civilians at once, and it didn't like that very much. <laughs> <laughs> As you can see, running it at full speed, our net c income is currently plummeting. I wonder why. So yes, in this so scenario... there's really no reason to run it at the maximum speed. Yes, um... You will run... You will want to run the max speed when you think that you're all covered. But, yeah. You can clearly see the net income's flopping around, it's kind of going up, it's kind of going down. And I'm pretty sure if you left this running, it would eventually collapse. Because, as you can see, heaven and hell is kind of not zoned properly, and some of the buildings are not accepting the right things. Everything's kind of gone horribly wrong. Oh. So yeah, this one... Ooh, heaven's getting the blues. The what? The blues! Uh, you get to listen. I guess to that's why they call it the blues. Yeah. See, it's mm. going blue, and it's uh -oh. playing a it's playing a smooth blues track. Is there a floating guitar, a uh, floating saxophone, or something around here? <laughs> floating saxophone. Uh. Yeah, the floating saxophone of intrigue. As you can see, it's blues. And I think that means that the the building technically stops working while it's exposed to the blues, so you're in a lot of trouble. All my buildings are not working now, I guess. This is a uh, less than ideal. It's it's running perfectly fine, you know. I mean, I guess that's what they call it, the blues. Oh, I think God, it's about time we convert it. the place from being heaven to a uh, being what? blue factory. You son of a bitch, singing songs. We're gonna get flagged. The death's I don't thing. think I sang it on yeah, tune enough for that to happen. Maybe. And you can see another problem here. These uh, little flags are saying that there's no gates available. Because the only gate is here, and it's blocked off from everything else. It doesn't matter. Um, so that's... Yeah, this is working perfectly as intended. We won't save that, because there's absolutely no point. And uh, we'll just run another one. We'll run Too Evil to Live, and we'll just see what the plot is for that one. The powers that be, disgusted with the evil stench of the planet, have decided to wipe out most of the planet's embos and start over. Since they're a friendly bunch, they've given you five years to the, get your afterlife in order. Okay. The spinach of the planet, yeah. I'm not quite sure. So what, you basically have to recreate heaven and hell, or? I'm not quite sure what the uh, <laughs> yeah what the goal is on this one. Um, uh, maybe it's I don't know. Uh. I guess it's kind of just a prefabbed heaven and hell, it kind of looks like. If you wanted to start up the game with a reasonable amount of the games being sort of done for you, just so that you kind of... Yeah. Looks like... Yeah. Just okay. so you can like, get the ropes a little easier? I think they're going to wipe out the pl I think it's going to wipe out the planet in five years. Because there's people living on the planet. I'm going to run the speed up and we'll quickly see what happens. Oh. Mm, nothing's happening here. Oh wait, there you go. Yeah, yeah. The and then they, all they were died. smoked. The end. And yeah, they all died. <laughs> Amazing. Oh, so that does kind of break the rules the of the end. game. 
Because usually it doesn't do that, I don't think. They don't usually go extinct? This one does... I mean, I think maybe this event can happen, but it's pretty uncommon that it happens. As you can see here, all but a handful of embos were killed. It's the mother of all floods. So yeah. Maybe you can't get a uh, multi-chunk of planet, but who knows. Yeah, so this one... A bunch of embos died. And so the catch with this bit was that when all those embos died, guess what happened? They all poured into heaven and hell at the same time. So for this one, you have to have built a pretty solid infrastructure. So yeah. Uh, hopefully that was enjoyable or illuminating. This game's... <laughs> I, <laughs> looks very interesting. I quite like this game, um, but it's also extremely difficult to play it. Um... Properly. Yeah, it looks like it. You can kind of get you can kind of get it feeling like you should be okay, and then you kind of have to hope that you built properly. Otherwise, yeah, you'll uh, you'll just lose money until the, you go into debt, and then you can't really get out of debt. So you just mm -hmm. you just game over, and that's that's the enjoyable uh, afterlife. I, yeah, no, there's good. nothing really else exactly like it, so that gives it a huge advantage. And you can mm -hmm. still you can buy it on GOG now since yeah. Lucas went LucasArts went to Disney and Disney was like, hey, money. So they yeah, they released it. Money, money, money. <laughs> and I believe it works fine on Windows 7. I think it works perfectly fine um, with whatever GOG did, which was probably just update the installer. I don't think it much else was mm -hmm. much of a problem. This would have been late enough that it would have been probably clean Win32 unless it run fine on most anything. Yeah. It doesn't install... Possibly, yeah. Uh, it definitely doesn't install properly on uh, Windows 7, because uh, the installer, I think, is a 16-bit uh, installer still, but other yeah. than that... Uh, I've noticed it being a really common thing with programs in that period. Like, you had Hellbender from around the same time, which ran, was actually pure Win32, but wouldn't install normally under uh, versions of Windows that can't run Win16 apps. <laughs> Because for some reason the installer and only the installer. Yeah. That was a common problem. Like most of the games were actually thirty two bit, but the installer was not. Yeah. Mm. So that's great. Um Alright, well, thank everyone for joining us. Um thanks guys no for hanging on. Only. Uh and that's the uh that's the end of this afterlife. It's very